ah, ah. Raven Loft is back. Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft brings the classic setting into 5th edition, but buying a book is kind of a big commitment. So let's first have a peek of all the stuff you can find in this book and answer the question we all have in our heads. Is it worth it to buy Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft? The Land of Mists, Ravenloft or simply the world. However you may call it, this setting is placed in a far away corner of the Plain of Shadow, filled with self-isolated demi-planes. To truly understand what Ravenloft is, we need to understand the nature of four things. The Dark Powers, the Domains of Dread, the Dark Lords and its inhabitants. The Dark Powers are the creators of Ravenloft and we don't really know exactly what they are. They could be deities, powerful beings beyond reality, or even a force of nature itself. What we know is that they created Ravenloft and have absolute control over it. The Domains of Dread is the name of the demiplanes that conform Ravenloft. They are little isolated islands in a sea of mists with no real connection between each other. A Dread Domain can be as small as a single house or as big as a whole country. One domain could be set in medieval times while another is set in the renaissance. In one domain necromantic magic can be super powerful while other domain has no magic at all. They only need to follow two principles. Each domain is a nightmare of its own and it's made as the prison of a dark lord. Dark lords are evil creatures that function as the center of a dread domain. For unknown reasons, the Dark Powers trap Dark Lords in the Plane of Shadows and create a Dread Domain around them to continually torture them with things related to their evil past. Still, they have a lot of control over their domain and its people. The inhabitants of a domain can be of two kinds, the real and the not real. The real are called Mist Wanderers, people who were dragged by the mist into Ravenloft while the not real are soulless constructs created by the dark powers to inhabit the domains and help on the torturing of their prisoners. There's a third kind of inhabitant, which the book calls the Travelers of the Mist. These people and organizations are able to travel between domains. The two biggest groups are the Keepers of the Feather, an organization of were ravens whose goal is to fight all the evils in Ravenloft, and the Vistani, a nomadic culture of merchants that has made it their lifestyle to travel between domains and don't stay in one for too long. The book includes a lot of other smaller organizations and a couple of renowned adventurers that travel in between these domains. I know you guys love creating new characters. Like, have you seen these search results? So you're gonna love all these new options in the book. Lineages are like lycanthropy, magical modifications of your race that can happen before or in the middle of your campaign. There are three lineages. Dampers, half humanoids, half vampires who fight their urge of feeding on the life of other creatures. Hexbloods, half humanoids, half hacks that embody fey nature and can even be called full-fledged hacks. And reborns, half alive, half dead creatures who live in constant limbo of not remembering who they were in life and being hunted by the same life's memories. Dark gifts are magical boons characters can get by making deals with dark forces or get inflicted upon them as curses. Every dark gift gives a character new abilities at a cost. Some of these cool abilities are Echoing Soul that grants you knowledge, talents and languages from another creature's life at the price of their memories affecting your mind. Living Shadow that gives your shadow a sentence of their own at the price of being a double-edged sword. Your shadow can be a useful ally one minute but turn on you the next. And Watchers that grants you the aid of otherworldly creatures that watch over your surroundings and protect you from the vigilance of others at the price that they don't serve you. They respond to another otherworldly being that watches over you through them. As tradition states, there's even two new subclasses the College of Spirits Bard and the Undead Warlock. The College of Spirits Bard uses tarot cards, spirit boards and crystal balls to invoke the power of spirits. By narrating tales of legend or fiction, they grant shape to these spirits for magic purposes or aid in battle. 
but the shape these spirits take is not always under their control. On the other hand, the Undead Warlock gets their powers from a pact made with a powerful undead creature that's been able to defy death itself. Over time, their bodies become infused with their master's power, changing their own physical nature. When it comes to backgrounds, the book has a new version of the Investigator that gets you easier access to people, places and information related to a crime you are investigating, and 5 optional features which can replace the feature granted by any other background. Some of these are the Inheritor feature, that makes you the successor of a figure of great influence. Revealing said legacy grants you benefits based on your ancestor's reputation. The Mist Wanderer feature, that grants you the ability to recognize mist talismans, magical objects attuned to a determined dread domain that allows you to travel to them through the mist, and the spirit medium feature, that lets you commune with spirits, granting you special knowledge on the nature of spirits and the afterlife. Ravenloft has an infinite amount of possible dread domains and the book even gives you an extensive guide on how to create your own domains. But if you are a Forgotten Realms lore fan like me, you are gonna love reading about the canon dread domains. Each domain comes with an overview description, important features and places you can find, a guide on how to play every Dark Lord, the concept the domain is built around and the best kind of adventure for every domain. You can find domains like Barovia, the gothic valley controlled by the vampir lord Strad von Sorovich in his perpetual hunt for his loved Tatiana, Bloodspore, the mind flayer infested realm where the godblain of Bloodspore tries to escape its imminent death, the carnival, a traveling dread domain guided by Nepenthe, a sentient evil holy avenger obsessed with hunting a mysterious creature known as the Color, Darkon, a kingdom that used to be the prison of the lich Asalin Rex, but after his escape, began collapsing over itself. Now, the vampire Alcio Baron Mitius, the elder mystic Darkerus Rex, and the silver-tongued Madame Eris fight over the rule of this dying domain. Falkovnia, a land sieged by a never-ending army of undead, where General Bladeska Drakov refuses to abandon an already lost war, and Har Akir, an ancient desert realm where the mummy lord Anktepoth hopelessly searches the lands for his Ka, the missing piece of his soul that will finally free him from the torture that is his undeath. These are only 6 of the more than 30 domains in the book. If you want to see a video about more of the dread domains, because I do, <laughs> I really do, this is my favorite chapter of the book, then go ahead and tell me in the comments. While you're down there, don't forget to leave a like and hit the subscribe button so you can help the channel grow. Also, I forgot to tell you in the last video, I got a Discord server now. You can join in and we can hang around, talk about D&D and that kind of stuff. Also, also, if you like my channel, you can now support me on Patreon. You can get different benefits like Discord roles, shoutouts on the videos and being able to choose the topics from upcoming videos. I'm very new when it comes to Discord and Patreon, so if you have any suggestions on how to make it better, I'd really appreciate your help. Ok, ok, commercial break is over. Now, back to the video. The House of Lament is a mini adventure for players level 1 to 3, meant to introduce new characters and players to a horror based campaign. You can use it as a short campaign or as an introduction to your campaign set in Ravenloft. After receiving a mysterious message, the players arrive through the mist into the House of Lament a haunted house built over desecrated lands known for numerous disappearances. There, they are joined by a plethora of characters from different parts of Ravenloft, like Jennifer and Lori Weathermay Foxgrove, famous monster hunters hired by a Borkan family, Irina Koliana, the reincarnation of Tatiana, the woman haunted by Strat von Sarvich, and the legendary monster hunter Rudolf van Richten himself. There, with exploration and a series of chances, the players will gradually unravel the house's huntings and the ancient evil that dwells in the deepest parts of the house. Ok, hear me out. What's cooler than new monsters? What about new monsters remixed to catch your players off guard? 
we have very cool guys like Dialog Garou, an alpha werewolf that, if it infects a creature with lycanthropy, they cannot be cured of the curse while the Lubgaru lives. The Nosferatu, a more feral and vicious version of the vampire. The Strigoi, a magically mutated version of the Stirge that has gained self-consciousness and a voracious hunger for living creatures. The Swarm of Zombie Limbs. The Zombie Plague Spreader, an undead capable to turn others into undead with a toxic gas. The Zombie Clot, a huge golem made out of zombies and freaking vampiric mind flayers. I bet you weren't expecting that. On the other hand, we have a lot of cool newcomers, like the body taker plants, an alien plant that eats people and then replaces them with drones, the boneless, reanimated flesh that attacks others seeking to possess a body of their own, the gremishkas, tiny creatures resulted from failed magical experiments that are resistant to magic and hound spellcasters, the unspeakable horrors, marfolmed terrifying creatures that haunt the mists between domains of dread, and the star spawn emissaries, beings of flesh, blood and teeth, ever changing and without a real form. As their name implies, they are emissaries from alien four realms whose sole purpose is to create chaos and unbalance in order to prepare the world for their master's arrival. Woof, that's a lot of stuff. And there's a lot I haven't even talked about, like types of horror, curses and chances. So is it worth it? Well, it depends. If you're looking for a specific guide on a horror campaign with specific places, encounters and NPCs, then you would be better with the Curse of Strat campaign. But if you're looking for settings, monsters and guides on how to build your own horror themed campaign, then Van Richten's Guide to Ravendoft is the book for you. If you want to know more about D&D books, I made a video about Tasha's Cauldron of Everything a while back, you can go and check it out. But before you leave, don't forget to leave a like, hit the subscribe button and tell me in the comments what do you think about Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!